This is assignment 8-3 in GIS Workbook 1. Um, in this th assignment, we're going to learn how to make a model. And the reason to make a model is because you're doing a certain set of tools a number of times. So it's quicker. Like um, if you have to do a certain kind of function for multiple cities, rather than do each individual city doing every tool over and over again, you can create a model that will do all those tools for you just by clicking on the one model. The first thing you want to do is navigate to the chapter 8 folder in my assignments and you want to right click, go to new, and we're going to add a toolbox. And we're going to call, I'm going to call it fishnet, you can call it whatever you want. And uh, Then we're going to go over here and what we're going to do is we're going to go to our data file to down here to Pittsburgh, our city geo database, and we're going to add the outline of Pittsburgh. Now we're going to right click on our toolbox, go to new, and we're going to add a model. this over here make the screen a bit bigger because we're going to be using four tools so it's going to take quite a bit of the screen the first tool we're going to be using is the fishnet okay and as this is what the fishnet tool looks like um, and I'm going to show you real quick how you would assign number of columns in rows First, you choose what template you want to use. In this case, we're using Pittsburgh. To find out the number of rows, what you're going to do is you're going to take the top and bottom numbers and you're going to subtract the highest number from the lowest number, or the, the lowest number from the highest number. Then you're going to divide by a thousand. The reason you're dividing by a thousand is because we want squares that are a thousand by a thousand. And then once you do that, you're going to add one. This is just to give us more space. That way we're, we cover the entire template no matter what. And then for columns, you're going to do pretty much the same exact thing except with the left and the right. Um, so we're just going to click cancel. So you want to click and hold and drag it onto our model. You want to click and just make sure create fishnet is highlighted. You want to come down here where it says make variable from a parameter. We're going to choose cell size width. And we're going to uh, rename that to cell size because we're going to use the same number for both width and height. So we're going to make, oh, whenever you make a variable, make sure just the fishnet is chosen number of rows and you might want to move them because the model builder will just cover them up with each other okay now for cell size we're gonna open it we're gonna put a zero the reason we're putting a zero in is because by doing that, it tells the software to create the, the cell size based on number of rows and columns. And we're going to right click and we're going to make it a parameter. The reason we make things parameters is because it'll be easier later on just to go in and change those numbers without having to create a whole new model. After the math, the number of rows is 52. Uh, you always round up. There should be no decimals. And that's also going to be a parameter. After the math, this one was 65. Now we're actually going to go in here and assign things. Uh, we're going to give it a name, P G H fish. We're going to name it 
Pittsburgh, or we're going to make Pittsburgh the template. Um, cell size for both of these columns, width and height. Rows and columns are already filled in. This box is always checked by default, which we want it to be. Then we're going to change the type to polygon. We're going to click OK. As you can see, everything lit up. And if you move the cell size, you can see now that it has two arrows because it's filling two fields. Okay, and now what we're going to do now is we are going to spatially join this PGH fish with Pittsburgh. The reason we're doing that is because right now this is just a box. Um, we're going to give them some values so we know what boxes are actually connected to Pittsburgh. So you just type in spatial join, click and hold, bring it over here. Now what we want to do is we want to, there are ways of just right clicking on it and drawing arrows. You don't want to do that. That's something for people that have been doing this for a while. Um, beginners should always just right click and hit enter. The target feature is the, the feature that we want the table to be joined to, and that's going to be our fish, PGH fish, and we're going to join it with our Pittsburgh. So and then we're just going to click OK. I'm just going to clean it up so things aren't cluttered. And if you put your cursor over the box, it'll actually tell you what the the tool inside will look like. And it drew in the, the arrows for us. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select which one of these actually cover Pittsburgh. So what we're going to do is use our search. We're going to use our select feature. We're going to click OK. Click and drag it over here. Once again, we're going to open and we're going to use our spatial join feature that was created or will be created because nothing right now has been created. Then we're going to use a query builder to build what our expression is going to be. We're going to go based on name and we want to use the greater sign and you want to put in two single quote marks. That is shorthand for null. So we're just going to click OK. OK again. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make that a model parameter. And we're going to go into search. We're going to clip. Because now we need what we need to do is we need to clip these labels, which they're just little dots in the center of each box, to this right here. That way we don't have box, little dots in the middle of nowhere, not connected to anything. So open up this. Features to be clipped. It's our labels to our selection. Click OK, and as you see, everything is filled in. We're just going to go up here and save. Then we're going to uh, right click on this. We're going to put Add to Display. And we're going to right click on this and Add to Display. What that's going to do is it's going to add these right to our map after we run them. So click, make sure nothing's highlighted and click the run. And if it's red, it means it's running that tool. When it's filled in gray here, it means it's been completed.
we're going to close, we're going to minimize, and as you can see, it now covers up this part. Um, I'm going to show you what we would have done if we just did the fishnet. Because a lot of you probably don't understand uh, what just happened. We're just going to call this test. The book doesn't have you that want to do this. Then we're going to use Pittsburgh. For these, we're just going to put zeros in. As you can see, um, these little X's come up. It's saying that there's an error. That's because we haven't put in our rows and columns yet. So we're going to put 52, 65. See, they go away once we put those in because now they know what the width and height are based off those numbers. So we're going to change it into a polygon. We're going to click OK. See, this is what it would have come out looking like if we just did the fishnet. Then you would have had to gone through, you would have had to do the spatial join, you'd have had to done the select feature, then you would have had to clip. For one city, that's not a lot. But if you had to do every city in Pennsylvania or New York or New Jersey, it could be a pain. So you would do a model and you would have to just go in and change the, the size of the cells. And that's about it. And it would do the rest and you would get results. So that's it for assignment 8-3.